This one right here, pound for pound, when I mean that, price versus quality, one of the best and rolly based scents on the market, period. Ferrari, you're up to bat. YouTube Fragrance family, welcome to another uh, Rhodes 08 Fragrance Review. Today I'm putting my nose on the house of Ferrari and their Neroli based scent simply called Bright Neroli. Part of their Essence line, um, which has another line which is called Les Eaux Collection, uh, which includes Noble Fig, which I've reviewed, um, excellent fig based scent by the way, Pure Lavender and this one right here. So uh, I don't own Pure Lavender, so this is my second uh, full-fledged review on this uh, O series. I need to get my uh, my mitts on Pure Lavender. Comment below if you do own that bottle. Let me know if it's blind buy worthy for under 40 bucks Canadian. Let me know. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the fragrance review, as always, please take the time to subscribe to your boy. Hit that bell so you can keep tabs on me. I got a lot of, of course, content coming up. Um, also, I'm also all over social media. You can follow me on all those platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's under my uh, YouTube name, Robes08. I'm not very hard to find. Go check me out on social media. Talking about social media and Facebook. Yes, I have my own page that you can support me, but I also have a group um, which has over 17,800 members. It's called Fragrance Guru Nation. We talk about fragrances, uh, reviewers uh, post their stuff and you can uh, buy, sell, swap, things like that. So it's a really great tool as a fragrance head to keep yourself uh, up to date with new releases and stuff. And of course, YouTubers like myself and other various things that include fragrances. Now let's delve into chapter one. We start always chapter one with under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this bad boy. Release date was back in 2015. Concentrations Eau de Toilette. Uh, the nose behind this one, who is the creator of this fragrance? This is a tongue twister, so hopefully I get it right the first time, which is Philippe Paparella Paddy. Uh, resume, lukewarm. Uh, also the nose behind Noble Fig, which I loved. So good thing because I actually love this one too, so that's two for two. Uh, Old Factory Group, Bright and Rolly is in the aromatic citrus genre, of course. Uh, some florals in there, obviously. Uh, a great aromatic fragrance, something that you don't have to think about. So the notes behind this particular fragrance, let's take a look at them from top to base. Uh, up top, we have Bitter Orange, Petit Grain, Citron, and Calabrian Lemon. In the mid, we got Neroli, Rosemary, Orange Blossom, Sichuan Pepper, and rosemary. Now, a lot of these notes actually um, overlap each other. They're all about, uh, if you do your research, uh, Neroli, um, a lot of these things like the Pizzi Grain is part of the Neroli, which I'll get into. Um, and in the base of this particular fragrance, we have uh, some greens here. We got some vetiver, some patchouli, and of course that amber. So the key notes to my nose, what are the notes that really stood out in Bright Neroli? And one good thing is, is it's the Neroli. Neroli is numero uno in this one, and that's what I want when there's a, a note in the name. If you're saying this is a Neroli-based scent in the name, I want a Neroli-based scent in the bottle. And that's what I sniff here. So that's a good good thing for Bright Neroli. Uh, also, I felt Vetiver uh, plays a, a very good uh, integral part in this, but also the Pizzi Grey. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the fragrance review. Let's talk about the scent itself, what's inside. Now I put a pretty good dent in this one for the fragrance review. Um, I've had multiple, I think uh, this is the fragrance that I've done the most videos on on my channel. Uh, Chad sent me a sample. Uh, I think I did like multiple sampling samples off that sample. First impression on this bottle. So it's finally time to finally put the nail in the coffin in this fragrance and stop talking about this. The review is here today. It's my scent of the day today. I'm living with it right now. Dry downs right here, that beautiful citrus still popping. Um, let's remind me of this introduction, which is a really great part of Bright and Rolly. Two for the community, three for the community. I don't know how to count. Um, immediately, and it's leaking on my fingers here. Immediately, this fragrance is super bright. Um, it hits me with um, citruses, obviously. The citruses are, are main players up top. 
Um, but the brightness and, and bright and rolly is the right word for this. The, the brightness, it's it's so, it feels like sunshine. Um, it's so bright, it's aromatic. Um, that's what I, I feel like up top. Now picture this, I'll take you to the Italian countryside. Why not? We're gonna be sitting in a yellow Ferrari just because it's yellow fragrance. So let's go there. Um, and the Italian um, cologne genre is all about the citruses and spices and herbs that kind of back up the scent. And it takes me to that classic Italian cologne type of fragrance. However, in a yellow Ferrari, just because of the brand. Now, getting to know Bright Neroli, you kind of need to know the struggle of Ferrari as a brand, which was housed with Hummer, Michael Jordan fragrances, um, can't forget a Zaro Chrome, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And it's in the bargain bin bucket at TJ Maxx um, for $19.99. Um, that's where Ferrari used to be housed. Uh, they, they still are housed, actually. This essence line, this upper echelon line that they built, and I say that loosely, um, the price tag does reflect it, but they're heavily discounted everywhere. Um, it kind of took that bargain bin mentality and threw in the garbage. The scents from this essence line are worth your time. They're worth doing fragrance reviews on. As you can see, the community has been talking about this line and for good reason. And the great part is, is the price point hasn't really changed much as the cheaper founding fathers of the Ferrari lineup. Um, the bottles are much nicer, much sexier. The packaging is beautiful. The, it, it, it feels like a, a, a better fragrance than their other stuff. That's basically it. Bright Neroli is named aptly for the scent, but also giving Ferrari a bright future. If they continue on this theme with these uh, fragrances, um, they will continue to do well as far as our fragrance community embracing this brand. Yeah, they're gonna do well, at least with us. So Bright Neroli, it starts your journey as bright and as beautiful as a new yellow Ferrari paint job. That's basically it. It really shines, it glistens, it is a bright, orange it's a bright lemon i mean it really is the citruses are the star of the show and these are the type of fragrances this one right here that you can reapply it's not going to do much again i'm wasting sprays but at the same time this opening is absolutely beautiful and i'm not you know i'm not going to sugarcoat it this thing is nice off the top bright and rolly gives you what you want from citruses from the get-go big Bright, authentic, sparkling, citrus, aromatic. Immediately I'm floored with this opening. It shows me some citron, the lemon. It shows me the orange from the Neroli and it's done well. That combo shines up top. It really does. It's absolutely beautiful. So we got that out of the way. The citruses are awesome. Now let's talk about the Petit Grain. Uh, the Petit Grain is also a large part of this opening. Uh, Petit Grain is such an important note in the Cologne genre, which this scent is derived from. And uncanny, it's extracted from the leaves and twigs of the Neroli, as the Neroli note itself is distilled from its blossoms. It gives its familiar green, woody, mildly bitter tones up front of this scent, which makes me think of the old school classic Italian colognes of the day. The citruses are the star of the show here, but the Pizzi Grain does its thing also. Now the floral aspects of the Neroli do slowly introduce themselves upon opening. It's well balanced with bright Neroli's citrusy, zesty opening and its woody base. There's some depth that follows the Neroli, mainly a sprinkle of uh, peppery zing that you can feel some musky quality also backing this scent. The opening in total is uplifting it's bright it's got those sharp citruses that i want from oranges to lemons it has that pitsy grain slowly coming to the forefront with many aspects of the neroli showing its quality the creamy floral quality starts pushing through once those citruses start burning off you start feeling the star of the show finally taking over the scent here as the neroli is the main player but the secondary notes pair well with its uh, opening, of course, that citrusy opening to the start, right down to the heart of the fragrance. You're gonna get some soapy qualities here and it's gonna be mildly powdery too. The Neroli is a, a note that's not everybody's cup of tea. 
you got to admit, Neroli Portofino, to some people, that's a banger from Tom Ford. Um, they love it. They think it's the best from the brand or close of. It's top five, dead or alive. And others, they're like, what? You're going to pay $200 plus for this thing? It smells kind of feminine, things like that. Um, so you got to be careful with the note of Neroli, especially if you're new to the game. Just because you hear all these great fragrance reviews on this fragrance and all the citruses, you got to be mindful of Neroli and it's multiple facets, not all about the orange, but also uh, the white floral type of quality, the soapy quality, the mild powderiness of a Neroli that will come out. Now onto the deeper heart and base of the Neroli is the star of the show now. It's soapy, floral quality starts to shine instead of just the citrus quality. So a lot of people will just like that zing from the citrus and then they'll be like, oh, this, this took a left turn somewhere with the floral. So you gotta be mindful of that. Don't mistake it as the citrus quality also stick through. Mostly the orange, then the lemon. Um, obviously the orange from the Neroli still is present, but you lost that lemon. Rosemary, vetiver join the party here. Truly only giving depth to the scent. Both are fairly mild, to be honest. The vetiver itself is the clean side of things. You're not gonna get a deep, rooty, green vetiver here. You got the, that clean vetiver feel that helps the, the, the cleanliness of this fragrance. Not that it needs any more cleanliness to, to really show its, its real Neroli flavor. Nothing rooty here. There isn't much scent involvement in Bright Neroli, to be quite honest. There's not much moving parts here. What you get, really, it's a two-parter. You get the heavy citrus up top, with the pitsy grain and everything, but the citruses are your main player. Those start dying down, and then the Neroli floral quality, the orange blossom and all that, vetiver, uh, of course, and rosemary come into play, and that's pretty much it. You're not gonna get much involvement here. Um, it loses some of its pop here in the dry down, to be quite honest, as the citruses were really the star of the show. This is one of those that I wouldn't be, you know, I, I wouldn't be, um, surprised if people are saying, ah, I reapply this stuff just to get that uh, opening uh, to, to return. So I need to touch on this subject because of course it's uh, very much uh, paired together, is that this is often compared to Neroli Portofino from the house of Tom Ford. It's a private blend, if you haven't heard of it. Um, it's a super expensive fragrance. Um, prices are not even on the same planet from this to Neroli Portofino. So these are compare, comparables. Um, my honest take is this gives you the same general theme of a Neroli Portofino, right? If you like Neroli Portofino, this won't be exactly like it, but it'll give you that same theme, the same type of flavor. Um, I think Neroli Portofino does give you a little more of a rounded or uh, clean uh, Neroli note. Um, the thing that makes Bright Neroli stand out beside Neroli Portofino is of course, its use of citruses and, and that pop in the opening. And for that price, for the price point of this one, and I'll get to the price point, um, you're not going to find any, anything much better than this. And I'm being completely honest. This is a really great release, uh, not for retail, for what it goes at uh, discounters. So let's get into ratings as far as uniqueness in the scent. So let's talk about that uniqueness. <laughs> I'll be frank. It's a, it's not a unique idea. This is uh, this has been around for generations. Um, I'm gonna give it six bottles out of 10. Uh, the reason why is uh, this, you know, Neroli, uh, Neroli Portofino, Aqua di Parma Senza, uh, Zerzhov's Kobe, uh, 4711, which is old as, as, as the, as time. Uh, Neroli uh, Sauvage by Creed, that's another good one. Um, and I can go on and on. This is not a new genre by any means. It's classic. Uh, but it's well done here. And that goes to the scent. Uh, and I got to give it a score of a nine bottles out of 10. Um, I really feel like the scent profile and what they did with this fragrance and for the price I'm paying for it, um, I have to give it to Ferrari. I really enjoy wearing this one from top to bottom. And the intro is the star, honestly, but the backbone, it's still solid. You know, you can't just, you know, some people, you know, snobs will say Neroli Portofino, much better of a fragrance, much more rounded. Um, but for the price you're getting this one for, man, I could get two, three bottles of this, spray it whenever I want, and versatility is gonna hit it out of the park. Um, this is one of those fragrances that it's hit it and, and forget about it. It's, it's gonna be good for you. Um, so Bright Neroli, a good one, nine bottles out of 10. Now into chapter two, performance and feedback, uh, where I'm gonna talk about my sprays, a longevity projection and compliment factor. So let's get into it. Um, sprays, um, so I always, always start with, um, because there, there may be some scent in the stem here. 
Um, I always do my first spray on my chest, uh, obviously right out of the shower, not with my shirt on, but shirt off. One spray on the chest and then two on the neck. When I do two on the neck is of course one on each side and then two on the arms. Um, more sprays doesn't hurt this fragrance. You can go 30 sprays with this fragrance and it'll quietly start dying down on your skin as much as if you do 10 sprays. It doesn't really matter. You can't over spray this scent. Trust me, I've tried, but I feel like five is that I'm not wasting uh, my sprays and I can always reapply this fragrance. So five sprays, good enough. Longevity, let's talk about longevity. Six bottles out of 10 for me. Um, it's not a beast per se. I get um, from all my wearings that I've, I've tested this, it gives me four to seven hours um, like clockwork. Solid for a fresh scent. At times it looks like I lost this fragrance. I'll be like two hours in, I'll be like, where'd it go? Um, and usually you're going to get that sweet spot around four to seven. So five hours, six hours is pretty safe for this fragrance. Uh, seven, after seven, you're pushing it. You really are. Um, but it's mostly more on the, the lower end or lower scale. So six bottles out of 10 for longevity. A projection, I'm gonna give it six bottles out of 10 too. Um, it pushes well for when it does last. It does well. Uh, I never really had any complaints in regards to this type of fragrance. It's not a huge pusher by any means. So six bottles out of 10, fairly good score here for projection. Compliment factor, uh, actually pretty good. Um, these type of fragrances, very, very safe. Uh, I gave it eight bottles out of 10 because I've had some really good success with it. As far as compliment factor goes, um, I've sold some bottles of this stuff, especially for the price tag. Um, every time somebody does reach out to me, I'll be like, you'll never guess what I'm wearing. They're like, what is it? It's from the brand of Ferrari. They're like, the car? I'm like, yeah, um, this stuff is really good. And guess what? You'll have to go online. You can't get it in stores here where I live. You have to go here. Here's my link. Here's my coupon code. Have fun. She's cheap. <laughs> That's a robes await on Fragrance X, by the way. <laughs> so common factor, really good at eight bottles out of 10. Now let's move on to the next chapter, versatility. And this is where this thing shines. I mean, it's versatile as hell. I'll tell you that right now. Spoiler alert. Let's take a look at age range. Age range with uh, bright and rolling, any age. You know, teeny boppers, you're watching this, you're good. Grandpa, you're good. Everything in the middle, you're good to go. Men, women, you too. Um, you can wear this. Uh, this is uh, great for everybody. Seasons. Um, I like to put this one as a, a warm weather frag, spring and summer. Um, it definitely works wonders. Um, uh, Neroli can get kind of soapy, uh, almost powdery at times. So you gotta be careful on hot, humid weather, but a summer day with a little bit of heat, oh, this thing, it shines. I'm, it's just the citruses pop a little bit more on this one. It's less about the floral quality, especially in the opening, um, obviously more in the tail end, it's more about the floral quality. But other than that, um, really great in the, hot, the heat and it can be a signature set like for office wear. You know, if you're wearing a suit and tie all the time and you just want a cheap fragrance to throw on and not think about it, this is one of those. It's great for that. And that goes to night or day wear. Um, again, it's versatility, shines here, day or night. I feel like it's more of a daily driver, kind of one of those citrus-based fragrances that you can just wear at work. Um, but you can wear it casually. You can dress it up too. It works well dressed up or dressed down. Shorts, jeans, suit, tux, doesn't really matter. Occasions. Um, anything. Um, I feel like Neroli and Iris, when you have those notes in a fragrance like this one, Neroli, it can upscale a scent a little bit and it does it here. Um, so it, it really is all occasions. And that goes to versatility as a score. I'm going to give it 10 bottles out of 10, a perfect score for versatility. It's very high. Dress it up, dress it down, day, night, almost any season, to be quite honest. Uh, obviously in this Canadian winters, I'm wearing this outside, even though I like to wear citruses sometimes in the cold, they, they really just get killed in this Canadian winter. But um, yeah, any occasion really. Bright and rolly, perfect score for that one. Versatility for sure. Next chapter is value. Let's take a look at it. Bottle sizes available. What you see in my hand here, the 3.4 ounce is what they offer. Um, there's no, no smaller size and there's no mega big bottle. It's the 3.4 ounce and that's all you're getting. As far as pricing goes, um, this is where it shines. Don't go retail. Retail's $85 USD apparently. Um, but I wouldn't be paying that because at all discounters, this is $30 or under uh, for a bottle. So uh, definitely snatch one up. I remember when this first got hyped, super hard to find. Right now, readily available. 
strike while the iron is hot is is my thought process so pricing under 30 at discounters availability as far as from what i see from dave shooting this video she's available um i've seen it at multiple discounters so go get it <laughs> uh, new feature on my fragrance reviews are presentation so i'll uh talk a little bit about the presentation um, this is huge in, in this first installment because in Brighton Rolly, as far as old Ferrari bottles, they were, <laughs> they weren't pretty, to be honest. They used the, obviously the signature red, uh, with a lot of them. I didn't like their bottles. These, uh, bottles are beautiful. The cap itself, super heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's one of the heavier caps that I've, I've seen, uh, the leather here uh, surrounding the cap absolutely gorgeous a great touch to the cap itself the atomizer itself works very well um, no issues here i think it's a very good atomizer for what you're getting what you're paying for and the glass itself beautiful shape um it really does look like a uh or a premium designer brand or a lower end niche brand as far as the heavy glass i mean just everything looks so official it doesn't look like a car brand honestly that's what it is so kudos to ferrari and i'm going to give kudos where kudos is due and ferrari's doing their thing as far as scent wise presentation anybody from ferrari in this department as far as scent goes you're doing your thing presentation awesome so pricing versus quality so the price that I paid for it, and a lot of people are paying for it, I mean, even at retail, it's still okay. $85 is a lot, but at 30, under 50 bucks, it's a steal. And I'm going to give it 10 bottles out of 10 just on that because it's readily available everywhere right now. My thoughts are when, when it comes to a Neroli based scent and cost, um, this one is the best in class. You can't beat it. Um, I, I you, I dare you to name drop in the comments below. And if you can find a better Neroli than this, good. Cause I just found another gem. So you let me know in the comments below, but for me, uh, 10 out of 10 for pricing versus quality. So lastly, let's finish this one up last chapter. Let's take a look at positives and negatives of this fragrance and my final thoughts. So let's start off with the positives of bright Neroli. There's a lot of positives here. I've already mentioned a lot of them. Solid Neroli note, very solid, very well-rounded. Great use of many aspects of the Neroli, by the way. And the citruses up top pop. It's the star of the show, the citruses, to, to be quite honest. Now, the negatives to take away. Um, going into the heart um, of the Neroli uh, of this fragrance, it starts showing more of its white floral soapy aspect. And to some noses, that's going to be too feminine for them. And I'm being honest, uh, a lot of people say no, it's not, including me. But I have to do that disclaimer because a lot of people online are saying, hey, this is way too girly for me. So keep that in mind. Also here, performance issues for some people. Keep that in mind. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, the dry down could have used a little more pop here. Maybe a little more, um, you know, a little more cleaned up, uh, to be honest, to, to give it a little more pop. But other than that, I can't really uh, fault them for the price point and the quality that I'm getting here. Um, so my final thoughts on uh, Bright Neroli. My final thoughts are, this is an outstanding release for the price, if you can find it. So many positives to say that to me, this, all the positives totally outweigh the negatives for me. It's a versatile, clean, dress it up, dress it down type of scent. Uh, perfect, uh, to, to be quite honest, for the Neroli platform. Uh, it's one of the better ones in the game. Obviously the big star of the show, the citrus is, I can't stop saying that the citrus is up top with the lemon and the orange truly works well. They're authentic. I mean, it then it morphs into a true Neroli scent, a great release from the house of Ferrari. No complaints here. So as far as an overall score, uh, I'm going to give it eight bottles out of 10. Um, I, I feel it's a, a very good release, a very solid release. Can you find better in the Neroli game? Yeah, but you got to pay for it. That's my thought process. So, how would I recommend this? Buy, try, or pass? I would have to say this is a buy. Um, this is a very good first purchase for the brand. If you're looking for something, the first purchase of Ferrari. Um, again, you have to be familiar with the note of Neroli. That's the only warning I gotta, because people are gonna blind buy this and they're gonna get, you know, they'll be like, oh crap, you know, I don't like this. But I think for the brand of Ferrari, if you're looking for your first one, Noble Fig's good too, it's awesome. So is this. Um, I think it's a very solid 
uh, first purchase from the brand and also to try out Neroli as a note. It would be a cheap way of trying out Neroli and see if you actually like it and it may not hurt your pocketbook that much if you're into rolling the dice like that, like I am. <laughs> so there are my thoughts on Bright Neroli. You got everything that I can give you on this scent. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think about this fragrance, good, bad, and the ugly. Share it with the community down below in the comments below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say about this fragrance. Do you agree, disagree with me? I'd love to hear your take. Also, talking about uh, leaving uh, different ideas on the video, I'm gonna leave you with a few takes from my social media. I did ask everybody on uh, my Twitter, on my Instagram, and on my Facebook, and I asked their thoughts on Brighton Rolly. So I'm gonna pluck a couple of those and throw them in the back end of this video. So. Keep it tuned in and you're gonna see a whole bunch of people saying what they think about Bright and Rolly. Um, any, anybody that has put an opinion on, on any of my social media, merci beaucoup, I certainly appreciate that. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your Neroli-based fragrance wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.